25 Most Hated Hollywood Actresses of 1960s. Welcome to our journey back in time as we explore the darker side of Hollywood's golden era. Today we're delving into the stories of the 25 most controversial actresses of the 1960s, revealing the struggles and scandals that made them the most talked about stars of their time. Join us as we uncover the trials and tribulations behind the glittering lights of stardom. Catherine Deneuve Catherine Deneuve, a renowned French actress born on October 22, 1943, is celebrated not only for her exceptional acting talents, but also for her controversial personal stances. Throughout her illustrious career, Deneuve has participated in many acclaimed film projects and is respected worldwide. However, she has also been involved in controversies relating to her personal views. A notable instance occurred in 2018, when Deneuve, along with 99 other women in France, signed an open letter criticizing the Me Too movement, accusing it of going too far and distorting its original goal of empowering women. They argued that the movement had become overly strict, potentially criminalizing clumsy flirtations. This letter sparked widespread debate on social media, with critics labeling Deneuve and the other signatories as out of touch and conservative. Born in Paris, France, Deneuve began her acting career at a very young age. With her graceful appearance and nuanced performances, she quickly became an icon of French and international cinema. Throughout her career, Deneuve has been more than just an actress. She embodies the epitome of elegance and style. In 2024, at the age of 80, Deneuve continues to be involved in film projects, demonstrating that her career is still flourishing. She remains a living legend and a continuous source of inspiration for the next generation of actors. Brigitte Bardot Brigitte Bardot, born on September 28, 1934 in Paris, France, is a former actress and a highly influential figure in both the film industry and animal rights activism. Bardot became an international icon in the 1950s and 1960s, known for her beauty, sensuality, and roles that often challenged the conservative norms of the time. Her films, notably And God Created Woman, 1956, catapulted her to stardom and made her a symbol of the sexual revolution. However, Bardot's public life has not been without controversy. After retiring from the film industry in the early 1970s, she became a fervent animal rights activist, founding the Brigitte Bardot Foundation for the Welfare and Protection of Animals. Her outspoken nature continued as she often criticized the treatment of animals in various contexts. But her comments regarding Islam and immigration have sparked significant backlash and legal challenges. She has faced accusations of inciting racial hatred for her remarks about Muslim communities, leading to several fines by French courts. Despite these controversies, Bardot's legacy in cinema and her unwavering commitment to animal welfare have left a lasting impact. She was one of the first celebrities to use her fame to champion animal rights, setting a precedent for other public figures to follow. As of 2024, Brigitte Bardot is 90 years old and remains a passionate advocate for animal rights, although her views on other matters continue to provoke debate. Honor Blackman Honor Blackman, born on August 22, 1925, in Plaistow, London, England, was a distinguished actress known for her striking presence and strong characters. She gained widespread fame for her role as Pussy Galore in the iconic James Bond film Goldfinger, 1964, and as Kathy Gale in the television series The Avengers. Blackman's portrayal of these characters cemented her status as a trailblazer for assertive and independent female roles in cinema and television during the 1960s. Despite the fame that came with the Bond girl title, Blackman was ambivalent about being labeled as such. She had a preference for roles that emphasized her acting skills over her looks and often chose parts that showcased her versatility and strength. 
Before her stint in Goldfinger, she captivated British audiences with her performance in The Avengers, demonstrating her ability to handle physically demanding roles with finesse and intelligence. Beyond her acting career, Blackman was known for her forthright views, especially on political matters. She was openly critical of Sean Connery, her Goldfinger co-star, over his acceptance of a knighthood while supporting Scottish independence and not residing in the UK. This outspoken nature was characteristic of her off-screen persona, which combined elegance with a no-nonsense attitude. Honor Blackman passed away on April 5, 2020, at the age of 94. Her legacy lives on through her pioneering roles and the path she helped pave for future generations of actresses seeking strong and complex characters. Her contributions to film and television continue to be celebrated, highlighting her enduring influence in the entertainment industry. Deborah Kerr Deborah Kerr, born on September 30, 1921, in Helensburgh, Scotland, was an acclaimed actress known for her poised and graceful screen presence. Kerr's film career spanned from the British cinema to Hollywood, where she became famous for her roles in a variety of genres, showcasing her versatility and depth as an actress. Deborah Kerr initially made her mark in British films, where she worked under prominent directors like Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. Her performances in films such as The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, 1943, and Black Narcissus, 1947, displayed her ability to imbue her characters with a complex mixture of strength and vulnerability. Her transition to Hollywood expanded her repertoire, where she became best known for her roles in classics like The King and I, 1956, for which she received one of her six Academy Award nominations for Best Actress, and From Here to Eternity, 1953, which included the famous beach scene with Burt Lancaster. Despite her frequent portrayal of prim and proper ladies, Kerr was capable of playing against type, which she demonstrated in films like The Night of the Iguana, 1964, where she played a more troubled character. Her ability to portray a wide range of emotions and personalities made her a favorite among audiences and critics alike. Deborah Kerr was recognized for her contributions to the film industry with an honorary Oscar in 1994, acknowledging her outstanding career and the legacy of her performances. She passed away on October 16, 2007, at the age of 86. Kerr's enduring impact on the film industry is marked by her ability to elevate every role she played, leaving a lasting impression that continues to resonate in the world of cinema. Julie Andrews Julie Andrews, born on October 1, 1935, in Walton-on-Thames, Surrey, England, is a beloved actress and singer renowned for her crystal-clear soprano voice and enchanting screen presence. Andrews first gained major public attention with her roles in the classic musical films Mary Poppins, 1964, and The Sound of Music, 1965, for which she won the Academy Award for Best Actress and a nomination, respectively. These roles firmly established her as a symbol of wholesomeness and charm in Hollywood. Before her film success, Andrews had a prolific career on Broadway, showcasing her impressive vocal range in productions like My Fair Lady and Camelot. Her transition to film allowed her to reach a wider audience, capturing hearts worldwide with her performances that combined warmth, grace, and a spirited demeanor. Despite her on-screen persona, Julie Andrews's co-stars, such as Richard Harris, with whom she worked on Hawaii, 1966, have noted that she could be quite different in person. Harris described her as condescending and mean on occasion, suggesting a contrast between her public image and private interactions. These insights, shared in biographies and interviews, paint a more complex picture of Andrews beyond her public persona. Throughout her career, Andrews faced challenges, including a major setback in the late 1990s when she lost her singing voice following throat surgery. However, she continued to engage with the arts through directing, 
writing children's books, and performing in non-singing roles in films and television. As of 2024, Julie Andrews, now 89 years old, remains an active figure in the entertainment world and a beloved icon whose contributions to music and film have left an indelible mark on the industry. Her legacy is characterized not only by her iconic roles, but also by her resilience and versatility as an artist. Ava Gardner Ava Gardner, born on December 24, 1922 in Grabtown, North Carolina, was a prominent actress known for her stunning beauty and vibrant screen presence. Gardner rose to fame in the 1940s and 1950s, becoming one of Hollywood's most glamorous and sought-after stars. Her career was marked by a series of critically acclaimed performances in films such as The Killers, 1946, Mogambo, 1953, for which she received an Academy Award nomination, and The Night of the Iguana, 1964. Gardner's personal life was as colorful and tumultuous as the roles she played. She was famously married to Mickey Rooney, Artie Shaw, and most notably, Frank Sinatra. Each of her marriages was highly publicized and contributed to her celebrity persona. Her relationship with Sinatra, in particular, was passionate and stormy, reflecting the intensity both brought to their personal and professional lives. After her success in Hollywood, Gardner moved to Spain in the late 1950s, where she embraced a more bohemian lifestyle, a stark contrast to the Hollywood glamour. Her life abroad reflected her desire for privacy and her weariness with the Hollywood system, which she often found stifling and superficial. In her later years, Gardner lived a relatively quiet life in London, far from the Hollywood spotlight. She continued to act into the 1980s, though her appearances were less frequent. Her autobiography, Ava, My Story, published posthumously in 1990, offers a candid look at her life, career, and the many ups and downs she experienced. Ava Gardner passed away on January 25, 1990, at the age of 67. Despite the passage of time, she remains a symbol of Hollywood's golden age, celebrated for her talent, distinctive beauty, and the spirited independence she brought to her life and work. Raquel Welch Raquel Welch, born on September 5, 1940 in Chicago, Illinois, became an international sex symbol and one of the most iconic figures of 1960s and 1970s cinema. Welch catapulted to fame with her role in the 1966 film One Million Years B.C., where she appeared in a now-famous doe-skin bikini that became a definitive image of 1960s pop culture. Despite having only three lines in the film, her striking appearance left a lasting impression. Welch's career is characterized not only by her roles in films that emphasized her physical beauty, but also by her efforts to be recognized for her acting talents. She starred in a variety of films that showcased her versatility, including the swashbuckler The Three Musketeers, 1973, for which she won a Golden Globe, and the science fiction film Fantastic Voyage, 1966. Despite the typecasting challenges, Welch demonstrated her range and depth in various dramatic and comedic roles. Throughout her career, Welch also faced the challenges of being stereotyped due to her looks. She often spoke about the struggle to be taken seriously in an industry that prioritized appearance over talent for women. Her advocacy for more substantial roles for women in Hollywood contributed to changing perceptions about female actors during her time. Beyond film, Welch was a notable presence on television and stage, continuing to work into the 1990s and beyond. She also wrote books, including a memoir and books on health and fitness, reflecting her lifelong commitment to maintaining her physical fitness and well-being. As of 2024, Raquel Welch remains a celebrated figure, known not only for her iconic status and contributions to film and television, but also for her role in redefining female beauty standards and advocating for more meaningful representation of women in media.
At 84 years old, she continues to be a symbol of strength and resilience, with a legacy that spans beyond her filmography into her impact on popular culture and women's representation in the entertainment industry. Shirley MacLaine Shirley MacLaine, born on April 24, 1934, in Richmond, Virginia, is an acclaimed actress, author, and activist known for her vibrant personality and diverse interests, including her beliefs in reincarnation and spirituality. McLean has enjoyed a prolific career in film, television, and theater, earning her critical acclaim and numerous awards, including an Academy Award for Best Actress for her role in Terms of Endearment, 1983. McLean made her film debut in Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry, 1955, and quickly became known for her ability to portray strong, quirky women who defy societal expectations. Her notable films include The Apartment, 1960, where she starred alongside Jack Lemmon and earned an Oscar nomination, and Steel Magnolias, 1989, where she played a curmudgeonly but endearing older woman. Her roles often reflect her off-screen persona, forthright, spirited, and unconventional. Beyond acting, McLean is well known for her spiritual and metaphysical beliefs, which she discusses in several of her best-selling books. These topics often intersect with her advocacy for civil rights and women's rights, showing her commitment to exploring and advocating for a deeper understanding of human potential and equality. McLean's work in television has also been significant, with memorable roles in series like Downton Abbey, where she played the feisty American mother-in-law, Martha Levinson. Her performance brought her critical acclaim and introduced her to a new generation of fans. In 2024, Shirley MacLaine continues to be active in both her artistic and personal pursuits. At 90 years old, she remains a dynamic figure in Hollywood, celebrated not only for her extensive body of work, but also for her outspoken nature and her contributions to discussions on spirituality and consciousness. Her legacy is marked by her versatility as an actress and her fearless exploration of life's mysteries, making her a unique and enduring figure in entertainment. Congratulations on completing one three of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment one, otherwise comment zero. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Tippi Hedren. Tippi Hedren, born Natalie K. Hedren on January 19, 1930, in New Ulm, Minnesota, gained prominence through her work with Alfred Hitchcock, particularly in The Birds, 1963, and Marnie, 1964. Discovered by Hitchcock, she epitomized the cool, blonde aesthetic he favored, delivering memorable performances that helped define her career. However, Hedren's professional relationship with Hitchcock was fraught with challenges. She has publicly accused him of sexual harassment and controlling behavior, which she said adversely affected her career when she rebuffed his advances. This conflict ultimately led to their professional parting and had a lasting impact on her career trajectory. Beyond her cinematic contributions, Hedren is also known for her dedication to animal rights. She founded the Shambhala Preserve, a sanctuary for exotic big cats in California, inspired by her experiences during the filming of Roar, 1981, a project notorious for its use of live, untrained animals that caused injuries to the cast and crew. Moreover, Hedren has played a significant role in the Vietnamese immigrant community in the United States. After the Vietnam War, she helped Vietnamese women gain skills in the nail salon industry, which led to a boom in Vietnamese-owned nail businesses across the country. Now 94, Hedren continues to be celebrated not only for her contributions to film, but also for her advocacy and humanitarian efforts. Her legacy is marked by her resilience and her commitment to making a positive impact both in and beyond the entertainment industry. Jane Mansfield 
Jane Mansfield, born on April 19, 1933, in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, was a major American pop culture icon of the 1950s and early 1960s. Known for her blonde bombshell image, Mansfield was often compared to Marilyn Monroe, embodying the Hollywood sex symbol stereotype with her flamboyant style and public persona. Mansfield's career skyrocketed after she landed roles in films like The Girl Can't Help It, 1956, and Will Success, Spoil Rock Hunter, 1957. Her over-the-top publicity stunts and willingness to expose herself to media attention helped her carve out a niche in the entertainment industry during an era dominated by studio-controlled images. Despite her public image as a glamorous actress, Mansfield was also a classically trained pianist and violinist, showcasing her range of talents. However, she struggled to be taken seriously as an actress due to her typecasting as a sex symbol. This challenge was common for actresses of her era, who often found themselves limited to roles that emphasized their physical appearance over their acting abilities. Mansfield's personal life was as eventful as her public persona. She was married three times and had five children, including actress Mariska Hargitay. Mansfield's life was tragically cut short at the age of 34 when she died in a car accident in 1967. Her death marked the end of an era for the type of celebrity she epitomized, but her influence on popular culture and the archetype of the Hollywood blonde bombshell remains significant. Jean Moreau Jean Moreau, born on January 23, 1928 in Paris, France, was an esteemed actress and a seminal figure in the French New Wave cinema movement. Known for her husky voice and magnetic presence, Moreau brought depth and complexity to her roles, challenging traditional portrayals of women in cinema. Moreau's career spanned over seven decades, during which she collaborated with some of the most iconic directors of her time, including Francois Truffaut, Louis Malle, and Orson Welles. Her breakthrough role came in Malle's Elevator to the Gallows, 1958, where her portrayal of a complex, morally ambiguous character captured the essence of the new wave's break from conventional storytelling. Her performance in Truffaut's Jules et Jim, 1962, is often cited as one of her most memorable roles. In the film, she played Catherine, a capricious and enigmatic woman whose free-spirited nature epitomizes the new wave's innovative spirit. This role, along with others, cemented her status as a muse of the movement, celebrated for her ability to embody both strength and vulnerability. Beyond acting, Moreau was an accomplished singer and director, demonstrating her versatile talents across different mediums. Her directorial debut, Lumiere, 1976, was well received and showcased her insightful perspective on actors' inner worlds and the art of filmmaking. Moreau was not only a film star, but also a cultural icon who influenced fashion and feminist discourse in France and beyond. Her distinctive style and unapologetic independence made her a role model for women seeking to defy societal norms. Jean Moreau passed away on July 31, 2017, at the age of 89. Her legacy in film and culture remains profound, as she continues to be revered for her contributions to cinema and her role in shaping the portrayal of women on screen. Her work endures as a testament to her pioneering spirit and exceptional talent. Natalie Wood Natalie Wood, born on July 20, 1938, in San Francisco, California, was a prominent American actress known for her beauty, talent, and tragic early death. Wood's career began in childhood, and she quickly emerged as a major Hollywood star, earning acclaim for her roles in iconic films such as Miracle on 34th Street, 1947, Rebel Without a Cause, 1955, and West Side Story, 1961. Wood was celebrated for her ability to convey vulnerability and strength, traits that were vividly displayed in her portrayal of Maria in West Side Story. Her performance in this film, as well as her role as Judy in Rebel Without a Cause, 
showcased her depth as an actress and earned her critical and commercial success. Wood received three Academy Award nominations during her career, reflecting her status as one of the leading actresses of her time. Despite her success on screen, Wood's life was marked by personal challenges, including a tumultuous marriage to actor Robert Wagner, with whom she married twice. Her life came to a mysterious and tragic end when she died on November 29, 1981, at the age of 43. Wood drowned under circumstances that remain controversial and partly unsolved, with her death occurring during a boating trip with Wagner and actor Christopher Walken. Barbara Steele Barbara Steele, born on December 29, 1937, in Birkenhead, England, is an iconic actress best known for her distinctive roles in horror films, particularly Italian Gothic horror. Steele's unique combination of ethereal beauty and ability to convey terror and vulnerability made her a cult figure in the genre. Steele's breakthrough came with the Italian film Black Sunday, 1960, directed by Mario Bava. Her dual role as both the vengeful witch and the innocent princess showcased her dynamic range and solidified her status as a horror icon. The striking visual style of the film, combined with Steele's compelling performance, left a lasting impression on audiences and critics alike. Despite her association with horror, Steele's career was diverse, including roles in Italian art films and mainstream Hollywood productions. She worked with a variety of directors, from Federico Fellini in 812-1963, where she had a small but memorable role, to David Cronenberg in Shivers, 1975. Her ability to adapt to different styles and settings demonstrated her versatility as an actress. Outside of acting, Steele also ventured into producing and directing, contributing to various projects in film and television. Her distinctive voice and presence often led her to roles that emphasized mysterious or eccentric characters, keeping her in demand for both on-screen and voiceover roles. Today, Barbara Steele remains a beloved figure in the horror community, revered not only for her pivotal role in shaping the horror genre, but also for her broader contributions to international cinema. Her legacy is celebrated at film festivals and retrospectives, where new generations continue to discover her mesmerizing performances. Mia Farrow Mia Farrow, born Maria de Lourdes Villiers. Farrow, on February 9, 1945, in Los Angeles, California, is an American actress known for her captivating performances and her tumultuous personal life. Farrow emerged as a prominent figure in the 1960s and has had a diverse career spanning over six decades in film, television, and theater. Farrow gained significant recognition for her role in Roman Polanski's horror classic Rosemary's Baby, 1968, where she played the vulnerable and haunted Rosemary Woodhouse, this performance not only showcased her acting abilities, but also solidified her status as a leading actress in Hollywood. Her ability to convey deep emotional turmoil and innocence brought a critical edge to the film, earning her widespread acclaim. Beyond her cinematic endeavors, Mia Farrow has been deeply involved in humanitarian activities, particularly as a UNICEF goodwill ambassador. She has been vocal and active in raising awareness about children's rights and the impacts of conflict in regions like Darfur. Farrow's personal life has often overshadowed her professional achievements. Her relationships, notably with Frank Sinatra, Andre Prevan, and Woody Allen, have been highly publicized. Her relationship with Allen ended in scandal and a highly publicized legal battle over the custody of their children, which included allegations against Allen of sexual abuse towards their adopted daughter, Dylan Farrow. These allegations have been a point of contention and media focus for decades. Mia Farrow has continued to work in film and television, though her later career has been more selective. She has also authored memoirs and spoken openly about her life's challenges and her advocacy work. As of 2024, 
Pharaoh remains a respected figure in the entertainment industry, not only for her extensive body of work, but also for her commitment to humanitarian causes. Her legacy is marked by her resilience and dedication to both her craft and her activism. Judy Garland Judy Garland Born Frances Ethel Gum on June 10, 1922, in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, was an iconic American actress and singer, renowned for her emotional depth and vocal prowess. Garland's career began in vaudeville as a child performer alongside her sisters, but she truly rose to stardom under the contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM. Garland is best remembered for her role as Dorothy Gale in the Wizard of Oz, 1939, a film that showcased her incredible talent and made her a global star. Her performance of Over the Rainbow in the film became an anthem for dreamers and remains an indelible part of American culture. Despite her success, Garland faced numerous challenges throughout her career, including battles with drug and alcohol addiction, financial instability, and the pressures of living in the public eye from such a young age. MGM's rigorous demands and the studio system's control over her life led to long-term health and emotional problems. Garland's struggles were compounded by personal turmoil, including multiple marriages and public breakups, which often overshadowed her professional achievements. In her later years, Garland returned to live performances, which revealed her enduring talent and resilience. Her concert at Carnegie Hall in 1961 is particularly legendary, widely regarded as one of the greatest live performances in show business history. The recording of this concert won four Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year, Judy Garland passed away on June 22, 1969, at the age of 47, leaving behind a complicated legacy shaped by her immense talent and the personal struggles she bravely faced. Anne Bancroft Anne Bancroft, born Anna Maria Luisa Italiano, on September 17, 1931, in the Bronx, New York, was an accomplished American actress renowned for her depth and versatility. Bancroft's career spanned over five decades, during which she became one of the most respected figures in Hollywood, known for her powerful performances and intelligent approach to her craft. Bancroft's most iconic role came in 1967 when she played Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate, a performance that not only earned her an Academy Award nomination, but also cemented her place in film history as a symbol of complex femininity and sexual empowerment. Her portrayal of the seductive and troubled older woman remains one of the most notable characters in American cinema. Despite her association with this defining role, Bancroft's career was filled with varied performances across both stage and screen. She won the Tony Award for her role in Two for the Seesaw, 1958, and The Miracle Worker, 1960, in which she portrayed Annie Sullivan, the teacher of Helen Keller. Her portrayal of Sullivan was so acclaimed that she reprised the role in the 1962 film adaptation, earning her the Academy Award for Best Actress. Bancroft's talents extended beyond acting into directing and writing, showcasing her artistic versatility. Her marriage to comedian and director Mel Brooks also brought her into the realm of comedy, where she occasionally appeared in lighter roles, including parts in Brooks' films. Anne Bancroft passed away on June 6, 2005, at the age of 73. Her legacy lives on through her memorable performances and significant contributions to the arts, leaving an indelible mark on both Broadway and Hollywood. Sophia Loren Sophia Loren, born Sophia Villani Ciccolone on September 20, 1934, in Rome, Italy, is an acclaimed Italian actress whose film career and charismatic performances have made her a lasting symbol of Italian cinema. Loren rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most recognizable and celebrated actresses in the international film industry. Loren's breakout role came in Two Women, 
1960, where she played Cecira, a resilient mother surviving World War II in Italy. This performance won her the Academy Award for Best Actress, making her the first actor to win an Oscar for a performance in a foreign language film. This historic achievement highlighted her extraordinary talent and opened the doors to a series of successful Hollywood films. Throughout the 1960s and beyond, Lauren starred in a mix of Italian and American films, showcasing her range and depth as an actress. Her notable films include El Cid, 1961, Marriage Italian Style, 1964, for which she received another Oscar nomination, and A Special Day, 1977. Her screen presence, combined with her beauty, made her a lasting icon of glamour and sophistication. Beyond her film work, Lauren has also been a significant figure in fashion and beauty, known for her timeless style and elegance. Her personal life, particularly her marriage to Italian film producer Carlo Ponti, also drew considerable public attention and was marked by both devotion and controversy due to the legal issues surrounding their marriage in the early years. Sophia Loren has continued to act into her later years, appearing in films and as a guest star on television, showing her enduring appeal and dedication to her craft. Her contributions to film and culture have been recognized with numerous awards and accolades, including an honorary Academy Award in 1991 for her lifetime achievements. Jane Fonda Jane Fonda, born on December 21, 1937, in New York City, is an iconic American actress, activist, and fitness guru whose career has spanned over six decades. The daughter of legendary actor Henry Fonda, Jane carved out her own path in Hollywood with a blend of critically acclaimed performances and a strong commitment to political and social causes. Fonda's film career took off in the 1960s with hits like Barefoot in the Park, 1967, and Clute, 1971, for which she won her first Academy Award for Best Actress. Her role in Clute showcased her ability to play complex characters, setting a precedent for her future career choices. Fonda continued to dominate the screen in the 1970s and 1980s with films like Coming Home, 1978, which earned her a second Oscar, and The China Syndrome, 1979. However, Fonda's acting achievements are perhaps equally matched by her activism. During the Vietnam War, she was an outspoken opponent of U.S. military policy, which earned her both fervent support and sharp criticism. Her visit to Hanoi in 1972, where she was photographed seated on an anti-aircraft gun, sparked a controversy that persists in public memory. Despite the backlash, Fonda has continued to advocate for many causes, including women's rights, environmental issues, and peace. In the 1980s, Fonda also revolutionized the fitness industry with her workout videos, which were immensely popular and helped many people embrace a healthier lifestyle. These videos also marked a new phase in her career, showing her versatility and ability to influence public health trends. Now 86, Jane Fonda is revered not only for her extensive body of work in entertainment, but also for her unwavering commitment to activism. Anne Margaret Anne Margaret, born Anne Margaret Olsen on April 28, 1941, in Sweden, is a Swedish-American actress, singer, and dancer whose career in entertainment spans over six decades. She became a prominent figure in American popular culture during the 1960s, known for her vibrant performances, distinctive voice, and magnetic screen presence. Anne Margaret's breakthrough came with the film Bye Bye Birdie, 1963, where her portrayal of the vivacious Kim McAfee captured the hearts of audiences and established her as a major star. This role showcased her singing and dancing talents and set the tone for her dynamic career. She solidified her status as a sex symbol and talented actress in Viva Las Vegas, 1964, starring alongside Elvis Presley. The chemistry between the two on screen was palpable, 
and the movie remains one of the era's most memorable musical films. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Anne Margaret continued to appear in a variety of film genres, including dramatic roles that showcased her acting range. Her performances in Carnal Knowledge, 1971, and Tommy, 1975, earned her Academy Award nominations, proving her ability to tackle complex and challenging roles beyond the musical and romantic comedy genres. In addition to her film career, Anne Margaret had a successful recording career, releasing several albums and singles that highlighted her versatile singing style. Her stage presence was equally impressive, featuring high-energy performances that often included song and dance, making her a popular act in Las Vegas and on international tours. In her later years, Anne Margaret has continued to work in film and television, adapting to character roles that reflect her depth and maturity as an actress. Her contributions to the entertainment industry have been recognized with numerous awards, including Emmy wins and nominations. Claudia Cardinale. Claudia Cardinale, born on April 15, 1938, in Tunis, Tunisia, is an iconic Italian actress known for her captivating performances in some of the most celebrated European films of the 1960s and 1970s. With her natural beauty and dynamic presence, Cardinale became a prominent figure in the Italian cinema renaissance, starring in a series of films that have since become classics. Cardinale's breakthrough came with her role in Rocco and His Brothers, 1960, by Lucino Visconti, where she delivered a compelling performance that earned her widespread acclaim. Her ability to embody complex characters was further demonstrated in Federico Fellini's 812, 1963, where she played herself, adding a layer of meta-narrative to the film's exploration of creative struggle. Perhaps her most famous role came in Sergio Leone's epic western Once Upon a Time in the West, 1968, where she starred as Jill McBain. This film showcased her ability to hold her own alongside established male actors, bringing depth and strength to her character, a widow in the Old West. Her performance is often cited as one of the defining roles of her career. Beyond her work in Italian cinema, Cardinale appeared in several major Hollywood films, further establishing her international star status. She has worked with a range of influential directors, including Werner Herzog and Francis Ford Coppola, demonstrating her versatility and enduring appeal. Claudia Cardinale's off-screen life has been equally as robust. Known for her commitment to various humanitarian causes, she has been a vocal advocate for women's rights and children's issues, using her fame to highlight important social issues. Patricia Neal. Patricia Neal, born Patsy Louise Neal on January 20, 1926, in Packard, Kentucky, was an esteemed American actress known for her distinctive voice and profound acting prowess. Neal's career was marked by both critical acclaim and personal challenges, including a series of health issues that she bravely overcame. Neal's film career began to ascend in the late 1940s and early 1950s, with notable early roles including her performance in The Day the Earth Stood Still, 1951, a classic science fiction film. However, it was her role in HUD, 1963, opposite Paul Newman, that truly showcased her talent and earned her the Academy Award for Best Actress. In this film, Neil portrayed Alma Brown, a housekeeper, and her gritty, nuanced performance captured the complexities of her character's struggles and resilience. In addition to her film work, Neil was also a celebrated stage actress, exemplifying her versatility across different acting mediums. She appeared in various Broadway productions, earning critical acclaim for her ability to convey deep emotional narratives and complex personalities. Neil's career and personal life were dramatically impacted by several strokes she suffered in 1965 at the height of her career. These health challenges led to a significant pause in her acting work as she underwent a long period of rehabilitation. Demonstrating remarkable determination, Neil returned to film acting, 
continuing to deliver compelling performances and earning a second Academy Award nomination for her role in The Subject Was Roses, 1968. Her marriage to writer Roald Dahl was also a significant aspect of her life, encompassing both her personal struggles and her career resurgence. Dahl's support during her rehabilitation from the strokes was crucial, though their relationship faced numerous strains and eventually ended in divorce. She passed away on August 8, 2010, but remains remembered as a powerful, graceful presence in the acting world, whose performances continue to resonate with audiences and actors alike. Diana Rigg Diana Rigg, born Enid Diana Elizabeth Rigg, on July 20, 1938, in Doncaster, Yorkshire, England, was a distinguished actress known for her versatility, elegance, and commanding presence. Rigg's career spanned several decades, during which she excelled in both classic and contemporary roles across film, television, and theater. Rigg first gained widespread recognition as Emma Peel in the 1960s television series The Avengers a role that showcased her as a smart, stylish, and skilled secret agent. Her portrayal became iconic, defining her early career and making her a symbol of empowered femininity. This role paved the way for future strong female characters in television and cinema. In addition to her work on television, Rigg had a prolific career in theater, particularly with the Royal Shakespeare Company, where she demonstrated her broad range in plays from Shakespeare to modern dramas. Her stage work was highly acclaimed, earning her several awards and nominations throughout her career. Diana Rigg also made significant contributions to film, with notable roles including the complex and haunting portrayal of Lady Olena Tyrell in the HBO series Game of Thrones. Her performance in this series brought her critical acclaim and introduced her to a new generation of fans, proving her ability to adapt to different media and genres over time. Riggs' personal life, marked by her wit and strong opinions, mirrored the strength of the characters she portrayed. She was outspoken about issues in the entertainment industry, particularly regarding the treatment of women, which resonated with many and added to her respected persona. Diana Rigg passed away on September 10, 2020, but her legacy as a trailblazer for strong, intelligent, and complex female characters lives on. Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar, born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler on November 9, 1914, in Vienna, Austria, was not only a glamorous Hollywood actress, but also a pioneering inventor whose contributions went largely unrecognized during her lifetime. Lamar's dual legacy as both a film icon and a brilliant inventor makes her a unique figure in the annals of both entertainment and science. Lamar's Hollywood career began in the late 1930s after she fled from her oppressive marriage to a wealthy Austrian arms manufacturer who had ties to fascist leaders in Europe. She quickly made a name for herself in Hollywood with her striking beauty and talent, appearing in films such as Algiers, 1938, Samson and Delilah, 1949, and Ziegfeld Girl, 1941. Her exotic looks and allure captivated audiences, making her one of the most popular actresses of her time. Beyond her cinematic achievements, Lamar co-invented an early version of frequency-hopping spread-spectrum communication, initially intended to prevent the interception of torpedoes during World War II. Together with composer George Anthale, Lamar developed a system that would change radio frequencies at irregular intervals, thereby making it difficult for enemies to detect or jam communications. While the U.S. Navy did not adopt the technology until the 1960s, her invention later became a basis for modern Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth communication systems, highlighting her profound impact on today's technological landscape. Despite her significant contributions to science and technology, Lamar's inventiveness was not widely acknowledged until the later years of her life, and she often remarked that her beauty was both a blessing and a curse, often overshadowing her intellectual achievements. Hedy Lamar passed away on January 19, 2000. 
but she left behind a legacy that is truly remarkable for its breadth and depth. She is now recognized not only as a symbol of golden age Hollywood glamour, but also as a visionary inventor whose brilliance transcends her time on the silver screen. Stacy Dash Stacy Dash, born on January 20, 1967, in the Bronx, New York, is an American actress and former talk show host, best known for her role as Dionne Davenport in the 1995 film Clueless and its subsequent television series. Dash's portrayal of Dionne made her a recognizable figure in popular culture, particularly in the mid-1990s when the film became a significant hit, embodying the era's teen spirit and fashion trends. After her success in Clueless, Dash appeared in various movies and TV shows, maintaining a presence in the entertainment industry. However, her acting career later took a backseat as she became more involved in political commentary. Stacey Dash's public persona took a significant turn when she entered the political arena as a conservative commentator. In 2012, Dash's endorsement of Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney coupled with her subsequent appearances on conservative media outlets, marked a notable shift in her career from entertainment to political commentary. Her statements, often controversial, sparked debates and backlash, especially from fans who remembered her primarily from her clueless days. Dash's political involvement deepened when she briefly considered running for Congress in California in 2018 as a Republican, but withdrew her candidacy citing personal considerations. She also served as a contributor on Fox News, where her comments sometimes stirred significant controversy, reflecting her strong conservative views. Janet Lee. Janet Lee, born Jeanette Helen Morrison on July 6, 1927, in Merced, California, was an iconic American actress whose career was highlighted by her performances in classic films from the 1950s and 1960s. She is perhaps best known for her role as Marion Crane in Alfred Hitchcock's groundbreaking thriller Psycho, 1960, in which her character's unexpected demise in the infamous shower scene became one of the most iconic moments in film history. Lee's film career began after she was discovered by actress Norma Shearer, whose late husband, Irving Thalberg, had been a major MGM executive. This fortuitous encounter led to Lee's contract with MGM, where she appeared in numerous films and quickly rose to stardom. Her early roles in films like Little Women, 1949, and Holiday Affair, 1949, showcased her versatility and charm, leading to more substantial parts in the 1950s. Throughout her career, Lee starred in a variety of genres, demonstrating her ability to handle roles ranging from romantic comedies to intense dramas. Notable films include Touch of Evil, 1958, directed by Orson Welles, and The Manchurian Candidate, 1962, where she played alongside Frank Sinatra and Angela Lansbury in a critically acclaimed political thriller. Janet Leigh's personal life, particularly her marriage to actor Tony Curtis from 1951 to 1962, was highly publicized. The couple was one of Hollywood's most famous pairs during their time together, and they had two daughters, Kelly and Jamie Lee Curtis, the latter of whom would go on to have a successful acting career in her own right. Beyond her acting career, Lee authored several books, including The Dream Factory, 1990, and Psycho, behind the scenes of the classic thriller, 1995. She also took on television roles and made guest appearances on various shows into the 1990s. Janet Leigh passed away on October 3, 2004, but she remains a beloved figure in Hollywood history, remembered not only for her beauty and talent, but also for her contributions to some of the most enduring films of the mid-20th century. Her legacy is celebrated in the annals of classic American cinema. Julie Christie Julie Christie, born on April 14, 1940, in Chabwa, Assam, British India, is a celebrated British actress renowned for her performances in some of the most iconic films of the 1960s and 1970s. 
Christie's blend of magnetic screen presence and acting prowess made her a defining figure of the swinging 60s, embodying both the glamour and the evolving social attitudes of the era. Christie rose to fame with her role in Billy Liar, 1963, where she played the free-spirited Liz, captivating audiences with her charm and vivacity. However, it was her performance in Darling, 1965, that cemented her status as a leading actress. In Darling, Christie portrayed a model navigating the treacherous waters of London's high society, earning her an Academy Award for Best Actress. Her collaboration with director David Lean in Dr. Javago, 1965, further boosted her career, with the film becoming a massive box office success. In the following decades, Julie Christie continued to choose roles that challenged her artistically. Her work in McCabe and Mrs. Miller, 1971, directed by Robert Altman, is particularly notable for its innovative approach to the Western genre and Christie's nuanced performance. She also starred in Don't Look Now, 1973, which became famous for its groundbreaking editing and the intense emotional and psychological depth she brought to her role. Aside from her film career, Christie has been an active advocate for various environmental and social causes, often using her fame to raise awareness about issues such as nuclear disarmament and animal rights. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment too so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Famous People channel for more insightful content. We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.